Article 81, Price Tag Requirement It shall be unlawful to offer any consumer product for retail sale to the public without an appropriate price tag, label, or marking publicly displayed to indicate the price of each article and said products shall not be sold at a higher price than that stated therein and without discrimination to all buyers. The law is clear and unequivocal. That is, the law was clear and unequivocal when it was passed in 1992. But let's go back to what the world looked like in 1992. In 1992, Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls were on their second championship run, establishing a 67-15 record, in which MJ was named MVP. Patapos na si Corey sa kanyang termino bilang presidente, Pag-asa was hatched in Davao City, becoming the first Philippine Eagle to be successfully bred and in captivity. The Pepsi number fever controversy happened, which should be an interesting topic in itself. And yes, in 1992, wala pang internet sa Pilipinas. Because the Philippines was only plugged into the internet by this guy right here. And it was in 1994. Fast forward into 2021, and the world looks like this. Across the world, isa ang mga Pilipino sa mga madalas gumamit ng internet. We spend an average of 10 hours a day on the web. Pero, bago ang pandemic, sabi sa mga studies, only 2% ng mga Filipino netizens have purchased goods or services online. According to Paulo Campos III, CEO ng Zalora Philippines, pumalo ito ng 91% nung nangyari ang pandemya and along with it, the lockdown. Out of the 91%, 76% of whom consummated the transaction. Dahil may reduction sa mobility ng mga tao, there was a spike in online transactions. Which also explains kung bakit nagsulputan ang mga delivery services. If there was any industry which benefited due to the lockdowns, it would be e-commerce as a whole. But, as we should all know by now, every opportunity presents a new set of challenges. Isa na nga sa mga hot button topics tungkol dyan ay ang issue ng PM Cent. What exactly is meant by PM is the key? At bakit nga ba maraming naiirita dito at bakit ang marami ng beses nagbabala ang gobyerno tungkol dito, ay marami pa rin ang gumagawa nito. And in typical fashion, what should be done about this practice? PM Cent or PM is the key ay ang practice ng pagbibenta ng mga produkto o serbisyo online na hindi nilalagay ang presyo kasabay ng mismong post. At pag may nagtanong kung magkano, ang reply... PM sent. Would you tell us, sir, if uh, na encounter na ba kayo <laughs> na mga produkto na walang presyo na kalagay? Ah, oh, ano? Talagang marami, marami, marami uh, instances na lalo sa social media. Uh, uh, when they pag nagtanong ka, na magkano po? Reply ka PM sent, <laughs> di ba? <laughs> Yung tipong dumating sa point na parang ayaw mo na ayaw mo na lang tuloy mag magtanong kasi bakit hindi na masabi yung presyo okay. are they hiding something okay, okay, okay. Uh, parang ganun okay uh, but sir uh, ikaw na naka-experience ka na as in personal experience okay. na bumili ka na walang presyo na ka-indicate online online na experience ko na uh, na experience ko na yung bumili ako ng mostly food no mostly <laughs> food <laughs> food talaga walang presyo <laughs> oh walang presyo na pinapost sa Facebook okay uh, so Mag, mag, nagtatransact kami by a PM. Uh. By June 2020, at the height of the community quarantine, DTI, or at least one of its field offices, issued a warning to online sellers laban sa paggamit ng PM cent, citing Section 81 of the Consumer Act and threatening fines and arrests. Pero bakit, more than half a year later, 
marami pa rin ang gumagawa nito. Why would sellers risk fines and still do it? Do you also sell in mga gamit po online? Oo uh, po. Mga gamit, kahit ano-ano. Even your pets? Eh? Yes, pets. Pero ano pala, restriction pala sa FB. Bawal mag-post ng mga animals for sale. Uh, but animal items? Pwede, pwede. pwede. Ito mga accessories? Po? Accessories, cages, ganyan. Okay. Uh, Ma'am, do you disclose immediately po, kasabay ng mga items na binibenta nyo, yung price? Um, sa ibang items, may mga, katulad nga kanina nang sabi ko, sa mga animals, bawal. Okay. Kaya kami gumagamit din ng PM na lang for details. Bawal siyang i-post na for sale, tapos may price. Uh, so, Binaba ni FB for 3 days. Nabana ako kasi before. Dahil magbenta kayo? Animals. Bawal uh, siya. Sa FB. So, sa mga ganong kategory ng items po, ma'am? Bawal. Uh, uh, PM. Sa... PM. Could you tell us about yung advantage ng mga seller? Bye. Kasi pag nag-post ka ng item, kunyari, para sa akin ha, yung animal, para hindi ako maba ni FB, PM for details na lang. Tapos yung talagang interesado sa item mo, ipipm ka directly. Hindi na yung sa comment box section na. Didirekta na sa message mo. Sa... Uh, so iniiwasan niyo ma'am yung sagaran ng awaran sa comment section na parang gano'n? Oo, kasi may sulutan din nangyayari kapag nag-post ka ng price. Uh, nangyayari na po ba ito sa inyo, ma'am? Oh, before. Wa, isang bes. Kunyari, di ba nag-post ka ng item? Tapos sinabi mo yung price. Biglang yung nag-comment sa'yo, may message nung isang seller, binaba yung price. Kumbaga, may nangyayaring competition. Ano yung sulutan? Ano po? So, sir, naka-experience ka na rin po ba mag-transact? ng tinatawag nating PM set. Yes po. Okay, Kadalasan po, ganun yung ginagamit namin. And so far sir, may mga na-encounter ka po ba na nagagalit sa inyo dahil ganun or nakukulitan dahil PM set po ang ginagawa nyo? Uh, so far, wala po naman. Ah, wala pa naman. May mga tao lang talaga na gusto nakapost na yung uh, presyo. Okay sir. Pero Just sa ibang uh, Facebook page, talaga ginagawa namin. Pinapost namin yung Uh, tawag na Pero okay. pag required? Pag required, doon sa page. Okay, sir. Uh, sir, uh, can you tell us about kung ano yung motivations behind sa mga sellers na kagaya po ninyo kung bakit nyo po uh, hindi agad binibigay yung presyo hanggang sa may magtanong po? Okay. Doon kasi sa mga nagla-message so, nagla ng uh, presyo, okay. doon namin nalalaman kung sino yung interest time. Mm -hmm. okay. kasi, kasi kadalasan, pag yung tao ang nakita na kaagad yung presyo, hindi na sila nagiging interesado doon sa product. Uh, how do you say that, sir? Parang na-discroll okay. na lang sila. Kasi pag once na nag-PM sila or naka-communicate mo doon sa personal message, nagkakaroon kayo natatawag na connection. Doon mo siya ma-opera ng bagay doon din sa pangangailangan niya. Mm -hmm. okay. Kasi, sir, may mga nagsasabi po na ginagawa daw po ito para makapanlamang, or para po makapatong ng malaking presyo. As a reseller, sir, is there some truth to this? Yes, meron po. Kasi, bawat reseller, iba-iba yung pinagpukunan nila. Okay. okay. Bawat reseller, may kanya-kanya -kanya silang presyo. May iba na talaga na mataas magpatong. May iba, mababa na magpatong, kaso mahal din yung kuha nila doon sa uh, mm -hmm. kung sino yung supplier nila. Iba-iba yung presyo kasi depende rin doon sa presyo uh, or doon sa kapital ng mismo. There is a concept in economics called perfect competition. Perfect competition is a market model which requires the following conditions to be met. Sa ganitong market scenario, nakukuha ng mga consumer ang pinakamababang presyo, ang mga magagawa ay nababayaran ng tama, at ang mga negosyante naman ay tama lang at sapat ang kita. Walang nadadaya, walang mahirap, walang unemployment. In short, it's a utopian dream. It is, however, improbable to happen because the prerequisite conditions are filled with problems if tested in the real world. In fact, outside primitive agriculture, perfect competition cannot and has not been observed in the real world. But for the sake of this video, may pakialam lang tayo sa isang condition, that buyers have perfect information about the products being sold 
and their respective prices. Consider for example NAT, NOT NAT, and NOT NOT NAT. They are selling identical Batman stuff toys, gawa sa parehas na materials, ng parehas na manufacturer, and nakuha nila for the same price. Now, the three of them have to sell their stocks. If ang customers nila alam ang lahat na details ng product, quality, cost, of manufacturing and procurement, and everything else, how do you think will they sell their product? The answer is simple. Product differentiation. In economics, ito yung proseso kung paano mo isiset apart ang iyong produkto o serbisyo para maging mas attractive sa target market. In a perfect economy, how would NAT, NOT NAT, and NOT NOT NAT differentiate their stuffed Batmans? Well, the obvious reason is to lower their price. But if one lowers his price, the two would also lower their prices hanggang sa umabot sa point na hindi na profitable ang pagbibenta ng kanilang produkto and they all go out of business. This illustrates the reason behind kung bakit meron pa ring PM cent sa online selling. The same concept kung bakit hindi ka pwedeng magpicture sa loob ng malls or groceries because you don't want your competitors to know kung magkano mo binibenta ang iyong products or services para hindi nila matapatan sa presyo. Sabi PM cent, tinatamad akong mag-reply. Tinatamad akong makipag-usap. <laughs> ako personal experience ko, no? Personal experience ko. Tinanong mo. Tinanong ko, ang layo pang details. Kung nilagay mo lang sana yung presyo, eh, mas tapos agad yung usapan. So, yeah. So, you think uh, this is bad business practice naman. Bad in a way, pero hindi naman ganun ng kasama. <laughs> pero mas maganda sana yung magiging effect sa kanila. Both party, kung na- andun agad yung presyo. Okay. Do you think the government at some point should come in and i-penalize talaga itong mga taong to. Kasi so far, wala pa. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Siguro naman, um, kung in a legal basis, meron talaga siya. Meron talagang nababiolate. No? Pero so far naman, sa, sa sinasabi nga ng iba, na wala namang nagre-reklamo, so wala namang naapektuhan. Mm-hmm. No? Wala namang, uh, kung baga, malaking impact, malaking effect, kung baga, destructive effect. Mm-hmm. Kung hindi sabihin yung presyo, So, I, I don't think naman na masyadong istriktuhan ng government yung porke nagpipm cent. And, siguro dapat mas, mas intindihin din natin, bakit nga ba sila nagpipm cent? No? Hindi, hindi, hindi sa may tiyatago sila, hindi sa may uh, kinocover sila or whatsoever. Pero before that, mas, mas, sana, mas intindihin bakit ginagawa yon Before um, concluding na, ah, bakit illegal yung ginagawa? Dapat bang patawa ng parusa or i-fine yung mga nagpapapm cent? Para sa akin, hindi. Kasi, hindi naman po lahat na nag-online uh, selling ay mayroong malaking kapital. So, pag mas maliit yung kapital mo, automatic maliit din yung kikitain mo. Okay. Hindi po kagaya ng mga malalaking kapital, kaya nilang bumili ng mas mura. Kaya mas mura din din may ibibigay, uh, may ibibigay sa mga customer. Pero po yung mga nag-online selling, talagang iba-iba talagang magiging presyo. Kaya yung mga medyo mataas yung presyo is mag-PM cent na Kasi hindi nila kaya ang tapatan yung mas mababang presyo. Pag yung ibang mga customer, bumibili sila hindi dahil sa presyo, kundi dahil doon sa relasyon, hindi doon sa uh, nag-rementa. But what about Section 81 of RA 7394? The intent of the law is good which is to protect consumers from abusive merchants and their misleading advertisements. Pero kung titingnan mo ang batas, it was contemplating physical stores na yung mga items on display ay nasa mga shelves. Hindi na foreseen ng mga mambabatas in 1991 to 1992 ang internet age where even teenagers with smartphones are active merchants. And understandably so. The law needs some updating. The question is, how should the government approach this situation? 
the government has at least two options. It can be heavy-handed and magpakastrikto sa paghuli ng mga nagpapa-PM cent, imposing them fines. But if the government does that, it will stifle an economy that is in dire need of activities and movement because we just contracted 9.5%. Or it can take a lazy fair approach and maging mas relaxed pagdating sa usapin ng PM cent. We need economic activity, and the objections of overpricing at deception is a rather non-nuanced way of looking at things. Because after all, dini disclose pa rin naman ang price kapag tinanong mo, and wala namang pinilit na bumile kapag nagtanong ng price. At isa pa, in the age of the internet, madali namang tumangi kung namamahalan sa presyo. It is literally a few taps away. Hindi naman nung parang nasa divisorya ka na pag nagtanong ka, as good as nabili mo na yung item. The Civil Code of the Philippines has this little provision. In Article 1340, it says, The usual exaggerations in trade, when the other party had an opportunity to know the facts, are not in themselves fraudulent. The relationship between the government and the market has been, is, and will always be complicated. If it does not regulate trade at all, abuses will proliferate. If it does regulate trade and be too controlling, it stifles the economics and discourages innovations in the market. If we insist on the law and go jura lex sed lex, we forsake the eternal truth that the law was made for man and not man made for the law. Oh, no.